Hey, Posey Gloves here, and today we're going to be making a downer sound inside of Citrus, a great first project if you are brand new to the world of sound design. So we're going to be making something like this. So a really excellent, that's like you just came off of something sort of intense. Maybe it had like an impact. Boosh. And the nice thing is because we have synthesized it, we're able to control all sorts of aspects. We could create one of those boosh, one of those two really easily. Um, I, I prefer synthesizing to the sample approach depending on circumstance. So there's, there's a number of other ways to sort of do this, but I believe this one's the most popular. Now, of course, you could go the other way. You can make risers too. And if we're going to do a riser, you probably want to do a volume automation. So we just do that and... And these are really great for the reason, uh, the reverb at the end is optional, but these are really great for the reason that they just fill up holes in your track, if you, uh, especially when you want things to get very intense. So the whole point of the riser is we reveal some of the spectrum. We slowly carve it away and make it more intense. Maybe things speed up and the pitch gets higher. And then right at the moment of impact, it's super tiny, you wound it up in this little ball, and then boom, you've, you fill out your whole track, whole spectrum is revealed. And so noise will offer you that because noise is just, uh, you, you can carve away pieces of the spectrum as you're rising. That's what the filters are for. So we take away some of the spectrum, take away more of the spectrum. And then when we hit our impact, boom, we give it all back. And since noise covers the whole thing, uh, it'll sound really full and intense. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and... Uh, do this. Now, one other thing I just want to show you, you can have your drops a lot faster. This is just a, a function of the filter curve. So we could have something like this. Something like that. You just have a bunch of options. This is also a spot where some people, they might, they might just do weird things inside Citrus. So we're going to talk about some of those and make one with you. So uh, first, we just need to talk about the general idea. First, we generate some noise. Here we go. When we turn this on, it turns all the other signal generating stuff in this operator off. So we just get noise on every single key. It'd be the same kind of noise. Then I changed the routing and I sent it out the filter and the filter out the effects. The effects is adding, I turn off the chorus, which happens to be there. And the effect is adding reverb, which smooths out the noise. It's a very important step. And then we go to our filter and we just apply a high pass filter. I settled it on high pass two. And that's more or less it. Then you just clean it up with the spectrum. So let's go ahead and make one. So I'm going to take our awesome big long note, make a new pattern and paste it down. And I'm going to mute our old stuff. Okay, so here's our awesome new pattern. And right now, Citrus, let me make sure I'm on default. Citrus puts out just a sine wave. So first step, we need to make it noise, right? So we make it white noise. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different colors of noise. I'm not gonna talk about it, but Citrus is now generating noise. It sounds like this. So excellent, right? We are good to go there. And what we're gonna do now is we need to make uh, the routing change because we need to send it to a filter, right? And we want to put some reverb on it. And this can be pretty scary, but basically Citrus has two outputs. There's an effect out and a regular out. And so right now, uh, oscillator or operator one is sending out of the plugin. It's not going through effects or anything. So I'm going to middle mouse click it, set it to zero. I'm going to send it out filter one. So now it's going to filter one, but we can't hear anything because it's not going out of the plugin. And so to do that, we can either send it out at this point. So we would go from filter one straight out and uh, there, it would not go through any other processing or we can send it out the effect out or you could do both. Uh, I don't want to do both. I want everything to be processed. So if we play our, our sound now, we have our noise, but you hear that there's like that gargly. We don't want that. So what we want is for it to be clean. Uh, and that's, a, that's what chorus sounds like. And so I look at my chorus, I say, hey, my chorus is on. It's on by default at four. So what we do is on your effects tab, if for some reason you're still not there, you just turn it off. So now we're at zero. 
And now, but now when we play notes, we're like, oh, nothing's happening. Well, before the chorus was what was coming out of the effects. We have nothing else is on. So what we need to do is we turn on our reverb. And there is our sound. So it's getting out the reverb and I want it completely processed. I don't want anything coming out dry, but we can mix in the dry. And so you can hear how it just smooths it out. It's a lot rounder of sound, but it's still very much noise. So it's a very nice thing. So what we're gonna do now is, um, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can change it with these parameters. And we could talk about this, but the big one is there's algorithmic changes that you can't get it directly. They just give you general options and you get to those by scrolling up and down. So I like W plus, it stands for warmer plus. I'm assuming it just makes the mid range stand out a bit more and brings the high end down. Um, so that's, that's what I, I found this one to be the best one for my, this particular application. I, I thought it was, maybe you want the brighter one. And then we're going to turn the decay up. And if your reverb is like tailing too long or something, this is the setting you would come in and change. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our filter one and we see right now it's going through our state variable filter. We don't want that though. I want a high pass filter, but you could, um, that could be the filter for you, but I want it to be really a high pass filter. And the reason why is because I'm going to go with whatever this one, Hey, it's the same one. Uh, the reason I like the high pass filters is because my low end on tracks is normally pretty busy. It does depend on the genre I'm doing. So for EDM, dance music type stuff, you want your kick down there and noise just generates big rumbly frequencies. And you don't want those big rumbly frequencies going down there and mucking up everything, especially your, your golden range, like 200, 300 hertz. Oh my gosh, you don't want stuff down there uh, of the noise kind. You have other stuff that should be there and shine through. So I prefer a high pass. And if we play it, It already sounds pretty good. Now there's a couple of precaution things we could do. One of them is we need to go to our quality and turn on oversampling, maybe like 16. This is processing intensive, but the reason you do this is uh, to avoid aliasing. And so while you're working on your track, you may just take your render setting up because with noise, you can, uh, you can get results. So that'll just help with, uh, reduced noise it, it won't ironically it's reduced noise but it's like built up noise in particular areas of the spectrum it could cause problems later on so i'd notice it big time if i do combine the noise with chorusing i don't notice it nearly as much when it's just noise by itself so uh, there's that for you and so i'm going to go to alt 3 this is just a more intense filter so that when i play my notes there's nothing hanging nothing up there if i go to like a weaker filter you can hear like stuff. You can still, if you listen, you can still hear the the noise coming through. I'm not sure if you can hear it on YouTube, but it's totally there. And so if you go to Alt 3, this is a more extreme filter pull. It's basically, well, basically it is this. If you go to so many plugins, I need to clean that up. Uh, if you go in, it's like, here's your filter. And then when you choose Alt 3, it's like you make it steeper. So that's really cool. Uh, nifty deal. So now that we have that, we're going to take it, we're going to automate our cutoff by right clicking and hitting the letter A or choosing create automation clip. It creates an automation clip for us. And now we can shape our filter curve. All right, now if we want, we can go through with our volume control and do one of those nifty. I'd recommend setting up something with the BPM of your track. Um, but we could do something just as easily with volume. So what you could do is we could go min, max, min, max. And instead of repeating the same thing over and over and over via automation and trying to make them bigger and smaller, we can do something a little more, uh, easy. What do you call it? What's the word for it? Elegant. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to automate the min max, which can be pretty cool. Here it is. So we want our max to start out low and increase. So 
So we're scaling the minimum and maximum here, creating a more dynamic riser. And so that's how you make a simple riser in Citrus. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.